Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. I know many of you have been waiting for this report about the earthquakes there at Mount Hood. Definitely, you guys are making me do my work. Here are spectrograms from three different areas there on Mount Hood. Yesterday, USGS put out a paper saying that the earthquake swarm that is ongoing there at Mount Hood is caused by tectonic actions. Some of them are some aren't some are rock falls some are actual earthquakes because magma is on the move the juan de fuca fracture zone the juan de fuca plate is subsiding subducting underneath the north american plate here is an image of what they call the benioff zone where there's pockets of hot magma still under the ground see that and they've done testing it's up to about 40 kilometers in depth, which is about 25 miles deep. These 99 earthquakes that are listed here by USGS are much shallower than that. 5.4 kilometers there, which is about 3.6 miles in depth. 5.0, same depth about. A 0 0.7 there at Government Camp, Oregon. Most of these have been by, by Government Camp. 1.3, uh, let's see, a 0 0.7, a 1.2, etc. The larger earthquakes that have been felt have been on the southern end of Mount Hood. Mount Hood's last two eruptions were in this location, which created lava flows, uh, steam explosions, and lahars. Mount Hood and Mount Adams seem to have a connection. Uh, Native American folk folklore talk about how these two vo volcanoes had a battle. They were fighting for a maiden that they was at Mount St. Helens, and they were throwing lava balls at each other. Mount Hood and Mount Adams, according to, like I said, the Native American legends, were erupting at the same time. So that's something to watch out for. This arch that goes through here all the way up to Washington is broken into several different segments. They know that Mount St. Helens, its magma chamber, comes from the direction of Mount Adams, which erupted in 1980. Mount Hood has had spurts of activity in the past that they said was tectonic related. This area of the three volcanoes they know has been reactivated. And in 2014, they put out a paper at the University of Oregon saying how Mount Hood can go from dormant to active very quickly in a matter of just a few months. The key, the scientists say, for Mount Hood's eruption uh, depends on the rock temperature, which can happen when magma from deep within the Earth's crust rises to the surface. The mixing of two types of magma that triggered Mount Hood's last eruption about 220 and 1500 years ago. The two types of magma would be the older magma that still is there and then the hot magma coming up from the mantle of the earth that's because of subduction i want to show you a plumbing um, image from uh, mount st helens how it comes from the north east and it circulates around to mount st helens coming from the direction of mount adams here's another image of the subduction zone of the juan de fuca plate going underneath the arch of the volcanoes for the Cascadia volcanoes. What happens is we get a locked zone, and I've talked about this locked zone, where heat builds up, and as it heat builds up, it heats up the magma that eventually comes up to one of these volcanoes. That's what happened in 1980 with Mount St. Helens. Here's another image showing the Juan de Fuca plate subducting under the North American plate, and I'll pull this over. I made it bigger for you. And you can see as the heat comes up, to these volcanoes. Here we got the Willamette Valley in this image. Scientists say that there is some good news about if and when Mount Hood erupts. It probably wouldn't be a violent eruption. Instead of the magma tends to ooze out of the top of the peak. Uh, previous studies by Kent and the Oregon State University uh, researcher Allison Colazar found that the mixing of the two magma sources, which have different compositions, is both a trigger to the eruption and a constraining factor of how violent the eruption could be. 
They found that the magma in the upper magma chamber beneath Mount Hood is kind of like in a peanut butter stage in the refrigerator. Even though hot magma from below can quickly mobilize the magma chamber at 4 to 5 kilometers, now take note of the earthquake depth, so that would be about 3 miles below the surface if you take the kilometers and put it into miles. Most of the time, magma is held under conditions that make it difficult to erupt. They recently put up monitors to monitor the gas readings. I don't know if they're live gas, gas readings. It would be foolish if they don't have live gas readings, but they are monitoring the gas readings that come up. And they believe that the new technology they have, that they would have enough of a warning before Mount Hood erupted. So the seismographs that I was able to get that were working, one is VFP. VFP is the monitor I have on the right. That is the uh, far eastern monitor from Mount Hood. The other monitor is Hood. There is its location. That would be the one on the left. The other also is on the southern end. T-I-M-B, but it's actually T-M-B. That would be the one in the middle. I picked this time frame, 2338, because it seemed to be the most um, active <laughs> earthquake that brought up hot magma and gases, and it created rock falls. That was one of the larger earthquakes. It was a magnitude 2.7, 5.6 kilometers in depth. It would be in the upper magma chamber of Mount Hood. Here we got Mount Hood at the top. TMB in the middle and VF here at the bottom. This is that 2.7 earthquake and I'll extract that and we'll make it bigger. They say these are tectonic earthquakes. Let's change the horizontal view. All right, so here on the left, we got that 2.7, and we got examples of earthquake signatures. Top is debris flow, a distant earthquake, tectonic earthquake near Mount Rainier. Tectonic earthquake beneath Mount Rainier. Uh, it doesn't look the same, does it? No, it don't. And see how it's got a larger signature? Yeah, this one's smaller. Four more images of types of earthquakes. Here we got tectonic-like earthquakes, shallow volcanic earthquakes, surface events, and harmonic tremors. Let me close this out. I wish I could make this bigger. It's as big as I can make it. I can maybe change the horizontal view. There we go. That is not a tectonic earthquake. That is an earthquake underneath Mount Hood. This 2.7 was on the southern side, same location of past two eruptions of Mount Hood. At 2326, there was another large earthquake, a 2.5, um, near the summit, still on the southern side of Mount Hood. That's two right there, and it was right before that 2.7. We'll extract that, and I'm going to move this over so you can see it. And we'll zoom in so we can see it a little better. And how, can I make it even bigger? That's as big as I can make it. And then we'll extract it. I'm sorry, that is not a tectonic earthquake. This one very well could be right here. See that little knob on it, like a door handle? No, this is not a tectonic earthquake. This is a regular earthquake. How deep was it? five kilometers in depth also in that upper peanut butter like glob of magma using the swarm program here's the earthquake signatures as i show it there and i'll show you the spectrograms right there and we have a line of melt these pockets of melt as it comes up from mount hood there <laughs> over to what the eastern side of Mount Hood, this is the monitor that's far east on it, is slowly melting the rock. That peanut butter goo 
as the new magma comes up from the mantle of the earth. Here on uh, TBM, which is on the southern side, the center chart right here, that's the southern side of Mount Hood. I wanted to look at this signature here because this is what they often call blobs of magma that's coming up. Okay, and then we have lines, pockets of melt. You see how hot it is down here. And down here would be that far eastern monitor showing the hot gases that are coming up. Let me go back to this. Oop, wrong button. And that one's not working very well. I hate it when it does that. 1034 Universal Time. Mount Hood, TBM, which is also on the southern side, and then the Far East one. See how it settled down by the Far East? But, you know, we got hot pockets of magma. What was it showing? Okay, we got, let me go there. Let me find this one. Okay, right there. Oh, let me go back. This is what it was showing when I pulled the files just a little while ago. It's currently uh, 3.11 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. A lot of hot gases came up. Um, hot water came up. Here we got um, TBM and then Mount Hood. This is that signature right there. I'm going to extract it so we can see exactly what was that. What in the world was going on? Because I don't know. It's a signature that I have not seen before. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they were readjusting uh, the monitor. Let's change this horizontally. I don't know. But prior to that, here on um, TBM, we got an earthquake there. And we'll extract that. Now that one, I would say, is a tectonic earthquake. Magma coming up because of the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate moving underneath the Cascadia um, subduction zone, the uh, North American plate. Yeah, that one, I would say, is definitely a tectonic earthquake. And these are probably rock slides. Here is a signature from Mount Hood. And then the four major types of earthquakes, we got tectonic. Sure looks like tectonic. We got shallow volcanic. See, it's not as smooth. See how it's jagged? Surface event and then harmonic tremors. Here's another earthquake that I uh, extracted. Yeah, this is definitely an earthquake. And I made it larger so you can see for a fact it is not a tectonic earthquake. They are having tectonic earthquakes. But not all of them are tectonic. And that's where I pulled it from, right there. Here we got the VFP monitor and Mount Hood. I'll extract it from Mount Hood. And, yeah, that is harmonic tremors. Harmonic tremors. Let's change the vertical line. Yep. Those of you that have followed me know that they did not even know that harmonic tremors existed or anything about them until the eruption of Mount St. Helens. That means that magma is on the move. Let me, uh, let me change this here. There, I made it smaller. Let me come down smaller yet. Oh. See that? And then I'll open this back up, this image for you. Right there. Harmonic tremors. Why are they downplaying it? I don't know. It could settle down. I mean, they've had earthquake swarms in this location before. Um, they know the connection between Mount Adams and Mount Hood. Um, even the uh, Native Americans, their tales about the two volcanoes throwing lava bombs at each other. And what do we got over here? Lava bombs at each other. And we got Portland over here. We got the Dolls over here. We got Mount St. Helens over there. This is probably why USGS just loves me so much. But, um, yeah, they're only telling you part of the story. 
All right, we got a glass of milk. Think of it this way. We have a glass of milk, and that's all they're saying. But is that glass of milk half full or half empty? And why is it only half full or half empty? Did the milk evaporate? Did the milk get spilled? Uh, we have a glass of milk. We already know that. But what's going on with this magma that's coming up to the upper magma chamber, which is four to five kilometers, about three miles, under Mount Hood. So please put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. I'm also on Twitter and I'm also on Patreon and links are below. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.